Okay, so let's look at Phantom Power uh, and what it does to a Helix. It does not damage the XLR outputs of the Helix when Phantom Power is connected, uh, but I'll show you what it does do. So I've got um, my Helix, i got a patch called up and I have a looper at the very beginning. I just have a single XLR into the left channel and then power, the USB is not connected. Um, I recorded uh, just a, something on the looper um, and then again the looper is at the beginning. And, and then the XLR comes out and it goes into my interface. Uh, it comes into this left channel here. Um, so I can use this to adjust the input and then this adjusts the output to my studio monitors. And then I have the Orbin loudness meter called up. So I notice I have a phantom power switch here and it's off right now. Uh, so let me start the looper playing. All right, so Orbin loudness meter, you can see, I mean, I'm watching the CBS. You can watch any one of them, it doesn't really matter. All right, so it's not clipping. Here, I'll stop it. And I'm gonna put the microphone of my phone fairly close to the studio monitor. Can't really hear anything, it's pretty quiet. Signal to noise ratio is great. Um, you yeah, know, not a problem. Start it back up. And there's the loudness. That's what's coming through. Great signal to noise. All right, so now I'm going to switch phantom power on. All I did is turn phantom power on. The looper is still going. You can see the signal is still coming in, but it's not very strong. So I will turn the input up. I'll leave the output alone. I'll turn the input up to, to the meter is equal to what it was before. Okay, it won't, it's all the way up now. Before I think I was about negative 18 on the CBS meter. I have it maxed. And uh, what is it? I don't know, 22 or something, 21, 22, something like that. So I will turn the output up until I can, actually I can't even get it that high. So if I turn the output up to compensate, just from a, you know, playing from the studio monitor to get it to the same level that it was before, I'd say that that's probably about right. And now I'll stop the looper. Like I did before, I will now take the microphone of the phone and hold it close to the speaker and I hope you can hear what I'm hearing. It's uh, fairly noisy, to say the least. Now I'm not gonna switch phantom power off right now because it'll blast me out. So I'll turn this down. I'll turn it all the way down. Phantom power off. I'm gonna start turning it up. Now this is about, it's a little over half, I guess. Um, so that's the deal with phantom power. Notice, still quiet. You know, there's no undue noise coming out of the speaker. It did not damage the Helix output. Still works fine. Um, but that's what it does: is it thins out the sound. And you probably couldn't tell the tone on my my phone, but it uh, it thins out the tone and it really kills the signal to noise ratio where you really have to crank up uh, the output uh, of the helix or the input really of the, the mixer um, and then compensate with the output of the mixer as well if your mixer won't go high enough like mine wouldn't to bring it back up to normal level. So no, phantom power won't hurt your helix. It will destroy your tone though uh, and cause you all kinds of headaches trying to get things to sound good. So leave Phantom Power off when you're running XLR out of the Helix. If uh, it's not an option to turn Phantom Power off because the mixer has global Phantom Power and it's gotta be on for other mics or you're just going into an unknown situation, then use a DI box. 
and uh, come out of the quarter inches, the quarter inch of the helix into a DI, and then go to your mixer.